Hi, here is a change of pace from the normal celebrity nonsense. I needed a break from all of that. Oh, if you hear noise in the background, then I'm sorry, I cannot escape. That's my husband in there making breakfast and trying to sing, and he sounds terrible. Please ignore him, okay? Please. Let's move on. <laughs> so, I'm going to create a playlist debunking all of the presidents that's on the Mount Rushmore. I already did Abraham Lincoln and Ben Franklin. I will leave the playlist below, or you'll see it pop up above there. Now, it's time to break down George Washington, but here is a brief intro. George Washington was actually born on February 11th, 1731, not February 22nd, 1732. He was an Aquarius. You see, the colonists switched to the Gregorian calendar from the Julian calendar. His birth date was moved 11 days. Since his birthday fell before the old date for the New Year's Day, but after the new date for New Year's Day, his birth year was changed to 1732. He was also born in Westmoreland County, Virginia. George Washington could trace his family presence in North America to his great-grandfather, John Washington, who migrated from England to Virginia, like most of them had migrated from England to, you know, the U.S. So, we're all immigrants. <laughs> anyway, the family held some distinction to England and was granted land by Henry VIII. Much of the family's wealth was lost during the Puritan Revolution in 1657 by George's grandfather, Lawrence Washington, while migrating to Virginia. But, of course, little information is available about George's family in North America until George's father, Augustine, who was born in 1694. Now, Augustine Washington was an ambitious man who acquired land and many slaves. He was a very brutal and mean man, by the way. Built mills and grew tobacco. For a time, he had an interest in opening iron mines. He married his first wife, Jane Butler, and they had three children. Jane died in 1729, and Augustine married Mary Ball in 1731. And there is a lot of rumors going on around about that, like he had his wife killed, so he could um, marry uh, later, you know, marry later on, and you know, a couple years later or so. Yeah, they did that a lot back in those days. George was the eldest of Augustine and Mary's six children, all of which survived into adulthood. The family lived in Pope's Creek in Westmoreland County, Virginia. They were moderately prosperous members of Virginians, also known as middle class. In 1735, Augustine moved the family up the Potomac River to another family's home called Little Hunting Creek Plantation, later renamed Mount Vernon. And then they moved again in 1738 to Ferry Farm on the Rappahannock River opposite of Fredericksburg, Virginia, where George Washington spent much of his youth. Little is known about George Washington's childhood, which fostered many of the fables later that biographers manufactured to fill in the gap. Among these stories are the stories of Washington through a silver dollar across the Potomac and after chopping down his father's prized cherry tree, he openly confessed to the crime. It is known that from age 7 to 15, George was homeschooled and studied with the local church sexton and later a schoolmaster in practical math, geography, Latin, and English classics. But much of the knowledge he would use the rest of his life was through acquaintance with backwoodsmen and the plantation foreman. By his early teens, he had mastered growing tobacco, stock raising, and surveying. George Washington's father died when he was only 11 years old, and he became the ward of his half-brother Lawrence, who gave him a good upbringing. Lawrence had inherited the family's little hunting creek plantation and married Anne Fairfax, the daughter of Colonel William Fairfax, a portrait of the well-to-do Fairfax family. Under the tutorage, George was schooled in the finer aspects of colonial culture. In 1748, when he was 16, George traveled with a surveying party plotting land in Virginia's Western Territory. The following year, aided by Lord Fairfax, Washington received an appointment as official surveyor of Culpeper County. For two years, he was very busy surveying the land in Culpeper, Frederick, and Augusta counties. The experience made him very resourceful and tough in his body and mind. He was very athletic so underneath those uh, aprons and masonic robes he was a very cut up and athletic looking man okay now in 1752 george washington brother lawrence died of tuberculosis making him the heir apparent of the washington lands lawrence only child sarah suspiciously died two months later and washington became the head of one of the virginia's most prominent estates mount vernon he was only 20 years old at this time 
Throughout his life, he would hold farming as one of the most honorable professions, and he was most proud of Mount Vernon. He would gradually increase his land holdings there to about 8,000 acres. Now, this was in the early 1750s, so France and Britain were at peace at that time. However, France military had begun occupying most of the Ohio Valley, protecting the king's land interests and fur trappers and French settlers. But the borderlands of this area were unclear and prone to dispute between the two countries. At this point, Washington was showing his natural leadership skills, and shortly after Lawrence's death, Virginia Lieutenant Governor Robert Dinwiddle appointed Washington a rank of major in the Virginia's military. Now, on October 31, 1753, Dinwiddle sent Washington to Fort Leboeuf at what is now Waterford, Pennsylvania, to warn the French to remove themselves from the land claimed by Britain. The French politely refused, and Washington made a hasty ride back to Williamsburg, Virginia, <laughs> colonial capital. Dinwiddle sent Washington back with his troops, and they set up a post at the Great Meadows. Washington's small force attacked a French post at the Fort Duquesne, killing the commander Colin de Jumonville and nine others and taking the rest prisoners. This is when the French and Indian War had begun. So the French counterattacked and drove Washington and his men back to his post at Great Meadows, I'm sorry, later named Fort Necessity. After a full day siege, Washington surrendered and was soon released and returned to Williamsburg, promising not to build another fort on the Ohio River. <laughs> Sorry, the, though a little embarrassed at being captured because he lost a lot of wars, he was grateful to receive the thanks from the House of Burgesses, and he see his name mentioned in the London Gazette. So he was proud of the. Well, moving on. Anyway, Washington was then given honorary rank of colonel and joined British General Edward Braddock's army in Virginia in 1755. Then he went on to fight many more times and so on and with that and lost more than he won, but let's move on with that. Okay, now, okay, after leaving the army, Washington married Martha Dandridge Custis, a widow who was only a few months older than he was. Martha brought to the marriage a considerable fortune, 18,000 acre estate, from which George personally acquired only 6,000 acres of countless slaves, hence the last name Dandridge. With this and the land he was granted for his military service, Washington became one of the wealthier landowners in Virginia. The marriage also brought Martha's two young children, John, who was uh, nicknamed Jackie, and Martha, who was nicknamed Patsy, ages six and four, respectively. Washington lavished great affection on both of them and was heartbroken when Patsy died just before the revolution. Jackie died during the revolution. Oh, and her death is very suspicious. Anyway, from his retire retirement from the Virginia military and until the start of the revolution, George Washington devoted himself to the care and development of his land holdings, attending the rotation of crops, managing livestock, and keeping up with the latest scientific advances. And, of course, he loved the landed gentry life of horseback riding, fox hunts, fishing, and so on and so forth. He worked six days a week after taking off his coat and performing manual labor with his workers. He was innovative and responsible landowner, breeding cattle and horses, attending to his fruit orchards. While he kept over a hundred slaves and more and was known to have raped many females and male slaves too, he was known as the meanest slave owner in history. But his financial power gave him the opposite name. He also entered politics and was elected to Virginia's House of Burgesses in 1758 and then later was elected the first president because of his military and political power. Well, let's start off basic. You know the famous picture of George Washington with the hair and all that? Believe it or not, that was actually his hair. He didn't wear a wig and his hair actually did look like that. But don't get it twisted. His hair wasn't all white. He powdered it to make it look that way. Believe it or not, when he was president, his salary was literally 2% of U.S.'s budget. On top of everything else he owned and acquired, aside from all the accomplishments and the money flow he had coming in, Washington had a gambling problem and a lot of health issues, all based all from his oral hygiene. He had the worst smelling breath and not to mention his constant exposure to diseases from when he was in the war, which led him to be infertile. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm not done yet. I'm getting deep now. Believe it or not, Washington wasn't very religious. He didn't believe in God or anything. Well, it was told that he was into other satanic practices. He was very intrigued by that. Actually, he was intrigued by that more than God or Jesus. The whole story of him kneeling in the snow at Valley Forge to pray. That's a story that was made up by an early Washington biographer, Parson Weems. It was all a lie. Now, he did attend services, but it was all for showmanship. He didn't do communion or pray. He was a very heartless man. The love he shared for his late wife was also fake and mainly for financial reasons only. He was known, and I just said this, to be very fond of her children and children, period. Very suspect, if you ask me. But let's move on. And also, he developed some kind of close uh, secret romance with one of his best friend's wives as well. They, you know, um, traded letters back and forth and so on. Oh, and that wooden teeth story wasn't true. He did have teeth problems. Like I said, he had bad hygiene and with his constant drinking and smoking and also owning a whiskey distillery and his family alcohol and tobacco company didn't make it any better. So believe it or not, he didn't have any teeth. They were all rotten and or removed. Anyway, let's move forward. George Washington joined the Masonic Lodge in 1752. He literally begged them to get into it. After being accepted, he was given greater control and influence of members. Yes, there were sacrifices being made within the lodge, and pretty much um, random kids were being snatched all over the world, kind of like now. He was also a real regal white supremacy racist. He hated black people and or African Americans. Oh, and yes, all of the stories about him and the Illuminati was true, and he even wrote a letter. Take a look at this. The Library of Congress contains a handwritten letter by President George Washington where he wrote to another individual explaining that he believed that agents of the Illuminati had infiltrated America and infiltrated and were working within the lodges of Freemasonry back in the late 1700s. This is particularly interesting because the mainstream media who will cover the Illuminati occasionally on the History Channel and different shows, will claim that the Illuminati was disbanded after they were discovered and stamped out in 1785-1786 after they were discovered. And they were discovered. Their papers were published. But if you actually read those papers written by Adam Weishaupt and others, uh, available in English, in John Robeson's book, Proofs of a Conspiracy, published in 1798, and George Washington had been sent a copy of this book, still available today. Uh, I did a previous video detailing this, this work, but in Proofs of a Conspiracy, we see that Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, again, just an extension, a modernized version of the ancient mystery schools, and the Jesuits, uh, he had plans that if they were ever discovered and, and, and exposed, that he would revive the order even stronger within a year. So in the Library of Congress, you can find this scanned copy of the letter where they do hold the original. And it's very hard to read, but there is a, a transcription up here. So there's several correspondences here, uh, and of course they scanned many of the George Washington papers. But if you read, if you click the transcription, it becomes clear uh, that when President George Washington is writing to this under individual, he says, in a, in a previous letter he was writing some things, and he says in this one, it was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati, the principles of Jacobinism, had spread to the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. Now he did go on to say that he, did, he didn't believe that the Freemason lodges were set up by the Illuminati or were specifically the lodges themselves were completely controlled by the Illuminati. But he did say that the individuals were working under the cover of Freemasonry within those lodges. And the uh, President George Washington, of course, was a Freemason. So, 
To be honest, George Washington was like all white supremacists in his time. Racist, greedy, and murderous, rapists, etc. He also lost more wars than winning, as I said. A lot of soldiers got killed while fighting for him. The blood that he spilled is greater than Abraham Lincoln's. So, that's another president debunked. And another place needs to be blown up on that monument. Tell me what you think below and on to the next. listed videos and a sneak peek at my upcoming video script you can also see the making of one of my videos mm -hmm. even have a personal chat with me and much more so become part of the truth show family there is no fee just donation you can help me build and recruit more leaders and open more eyes oh don't forget to follow me and or like me on twitter facebook and instagram if you want to listen while working out or driving listen to me on soundcloud and speaker all the links are below hope to see you all soon